I, I have to say, you can't be for the mob on January 6th and for the officers. You can't, and it's not funny, because you're a threat to democracy. Sure. I was on the Senate, I was on the House floor when we went through uh, the votes. I remember when you objected to the results in Arizona. Y'all at home might remember where you were on January 6th, what you were doing. I know where I was, and I know where he was. I remember when they told us to reach under our seats for these gas masks. I didn't know we had, because they had deployed tear gas in the rotunda. The officers locked all the doors. We barred the doors the president walks through to deliver the State of the Union with furniture that we usually use to hold paper. And I texted my wife, Allie, who was seven months pregnant with our son, Cameron, and at home with our son, Jordan, who wasn't yet two. Whatever happens, I love you. And I took off my suit jacket, and I was prepared to defend the House floor from the mob. At the same time, after he'd gone around the country lying about the election, after he'd been the architect of the attempt to overthrow that election, when that mob came, Senator Cruz was hiding in a supply closet. And that's okay. I don't want him to get hurt by the mob. I really don't. <laughs> this election is his accountability. You cannot be, just be patriotic when your side wins. If for the first time in 250 years, this project of ours, this shared American project, that we did not have a peaceful transfer of power, the folks responsible have to be held accountable. That's why Liz Cheney has endorsed me as it got involved in this campaign and is saying to Texans everywhere, do not put Ted Cruz back in a position of authority because he's done it once, he'll do it again. He's trying to I, deceive I, the I, voters I of Texas. I want to jump in here because I think it's too important. We'll give, wanna, you, we'll give yeah. you 60 seconds. I want to be very clear to the people of Texas. I support the protections and the restrictions under Roe. But Senator Cruz just called himself pro-life. You're not. You're not pro-life. It's not pro-life to deny women care so long that they can't have children anymore. It's not pro-life to for force a victim of rape to carry their rapist baby. It's not pro-life that our maternal mortality rate has skyrocketed up by 56%. That's not pro-life, Senator. So to every Texas woman at home and to every Texas family watching this, understand that when Ted Cruz says he's pro-life, he doesn't mean yours. For civilian deaths yeah. and a humanitarian crisis yeah. in Gaza. Well, listen, I, I, will, I will agree with Senator Cruz that Hamas is a terrorist organization that hides amongst the civilian populace. This is part of their battle plan. They anticipate and want civilian casualties. They put their tunnels beneath playgrounds, beneath elementary schools. They do this knowing that they make it more difficult to then target them without it causing civilian casualties. No one in Texas or across the country should shed any tears for Hamas. What we can do at the same time is have within our hearts the capacity to say that we want to prevent unneeded civilian suffering. And that is something that I've always believed, that we can separate, and we've done this our entire history as a country. This is what makes us great, it's what also makes democracies like Israel great, is that we can separate the terrorist leaders of a group from the people who are being subjected to that. And so, to me, what we have had to keep our focus on is trying to provide as much aid as possible uh, to innocent civilians in Gaza, to make sure that children are not being unnecessarily targeted. This has to be our responsibility, this has to be Israeli responsibility. And that's something that I'll work on, continue to work on in the Senate uh, when I have a chance. Listen, we're all Texans. Uh, my idol, John Lewis, used to say that we might have come here on different ships, but we're in the same boat now. We're all Americans and we're all Texans. We need a leader who will bring us together around our shared values. That's what I've tried to do in my six years in Congress. That's the exact opposite of what Senator Cruz has done. Whatever he says tonight, you, you've seen it for 12 years. He's been one of the most divisive senators in the entire country. If you don't like how things are going in Washington right now, well, you know what, it's, he is singularly responsible for it. He has introduced this new kind of angertainment where you just get people upset and then you podcast about it and you write a book about it and you make some money on it. But you're not actually there when people need you. Like when the lights went out, when 30 million Texans were relying on a senator to spring into action, he went to Cancun. That's who he is. If you give me the chance to be your United States Senator, I'll never abandon you. And I'm asking for your vote and for your support in this election. I, I have to say, you can't be for the mob on January 6th and for the officers. You can't. And it's not funny. Because you're a threat to democracy. Sure. I was on the, Senate, I was on the House floor when we <laughs> went through uh, the votes. I remember when you objected to the results in Arizona. Y'all at home might remember where you were on January 6th, what you were doing. I know where I was and I know where he was. I remember when they told us to reach under our seats for these gas masks, I didn't know we had because they had deployed tear gas in the rotunda. The officers locked all the doors. We barred the doors the president walks through to deliver the State of the Union with furniture that we usually use to hold paper. 
And I texted my wife, Allie, who was seven months pregnant with our son, Cameron, and at home with our son, Jordan, who wasn't yet two. Whatever happens, I love you. And I took off my suit jacket, and I was prepared to defend the house floor from the mob. At the same time, after he'd gone around the country lying about the election, after he'd been the architect of the attempt to overthrow that election, when that mob came, Senator Cruz was hiding in a supply closet. And that's okay. I don't want him to get hurt by the mob. I really don't. <laughs> this election is his accountability. You cannot be, just be patriotic when your side wins. If for the first time in 250 years, this project of ours, this shared American project, that we did not have a peaceful transfer of power, the folks responsible have to be held accountable. That's why Liz Cheney has endorsed me, has gotten involved in this campaign, and is saying to Texans everywhere, do not put Ted Cruz back in a position of authority, because he's done it once, he'll do it again. Congressman, you have 90 seconds to respond. Oh, that, that was really something. I, I have to say, you can't be for the mob on January 6th and for the officers. You can't, and it's not funny, because you're a threat to democracy. You know, this is personal for me. My family's from Brownsville. Uh, my grandfather was a customs officer there. He joined the customs department in 1939. That's where my mom and my aunt were born and raised and where I spent a lot of my childhood. And I know that our border communities are real places where folks are trying to raise their families and get ahead. But time and again, uh, Senator Cruz treats our border communities like he's going on some kind of a safari. He comes down, he puts on his outdoor clothes, he tries to look tough, and he goes back to Washington and does nothing to help. In fact, he does worse than nothing. When the toughest border security bill in a generation came up in the United States Senate, $20 billion for border security, he said, we don't need a border bill. That's what he said. And you know, listen, this is, not, this is a pattern for him. He's never there for us when we need him. When the lights went out in the energy capital of the world, he went to Cancun. On January 6th, when a mob was storming the capital, he was hiding in a supply closet. And when the toughest border security bill in a generation came up in the United States Senate, he took it down. We don't have to have a senator like this. Let me be very clear. I believe in physical barriers as part of a comprehensive strategy to secure the border. We had a bill for $20 billion for 1,000 new Border Patrol agents, for more immigration judges, more asylum officers to help us deal with the backlog. I wanted to make sure we passed that. When I'm in the Senate, we will. And we'll also fix our broken legal immigration system. Senator Cruz has had forever, and he's done nothing to solve this problem. Why would we believe that he will with six more years? To respond. Oh, that, that was really something. I have to say, you can't be for the mob on January 6th and for the officers. You can't, and it's not funny, because you're a threat to democracy. Sure. I was on the Senate, I was on the House floor when we <laughs> went through uh, the votes. I remember when you objected to the results in Arizona. Y'all at home might remember where you were on January 6th, what you were doing. I know where I was, and I know where he was. I remember when they told us to reach under our seats for these gas masks. I didn't know we had, because they had deployed tear gas in the rotunda. The officers locked all the doors. We barred the doors the president walked through to deliver the State of the Union with furniture that we usually use to hold paper. And I texted my wife, Allie, who was seven months pregnant with our son, Cameron, and at home with our son, Jordan, who wasn't yet two. Whatever happens, I love you. And I took off my suit jacket, and I was prepared to defend the House floor from the mob. At the same time, after he'd gone around the country lying about the election, after he'd been the architect of the attempt to overthrow that election, when that mob came, Senator Cruz was hiding in a supply closet. And that's okay. I don't want him to get hurt by the mob. I really don't. <laughs> this election is his accountability. You cannot be, just be patriotic when your side wins. If for the first time in 250 years, this project of ours, this shared American project, that we did not have a peaceful transfer of power, the folks responsible have to be held accountable. That's why Liz Cheney has endorsed me, has gotten involved in this campaign, and is saying to Texans everywhere, do not put Ted Cruz back in a position of authority, because he's done it once, he'll do it again. For me, I know exactly what it's like when the cost of anything goes up. I mean, I know what it's like to be you know, dead, dead, dead broke, and to hope that something comes along so that you can get through that week. And that's why I've been so laser focused on controlling Texans' costs and lowering them everywhere I possibly can. One of those is the child tax credit. For six months, it was in place, and it helped us lift millions of Texas kids out of uh, food insecurity. You know, the North Texas Food Bank told me that they could track when the child tax credit hit folks' bank accounts because need for their services would go down. We wanted to extend that. We thought it was the right thing to do, to lift kids out of food insecurity. But Senator Cruz opposed it. When I'm in the Senate, I'll bring back the child tax credit. I'll also make sure that we cut taxes for the middle class. This has been a tough time for the middle class. We have to make sure that we're you know, alleviating uh, their tax burden. 
and we're going to invest in a new generation of housing to make sure that as we can increase our housing supply and lower the overall cost of housing. It's something that has to be a national priority, and when I'm in the Senate, it will be. It's time to finally tell the truth here. Uh, Senator Cruz just looked into a camera and lied to Texans about my position. <laughs> Let's be very clear. You should look into the camera and speak to Kate Cox, who's watching right now, and explain to her why you said that this law that you said is perfectly reasonable, why she was forced to leave her two children behind and flee our state to get the care that she needed. Or look into the camera and talk to Amanda Zorowski, who's watching right now, and explain to her why it's perfectly reasonable that because she had a complication in her pregnancy and was denied care so long that she may never be able to have children of her own, or to the 26,000 Texas women who've been forced to give birth to their rapist child under this law that you call perfectly reasonable. It's not. This is not freedom. I trust Texas women to make their own healthcare decisions. You know, Allie and I have had two bo baby boys here in Dallas in the last five years. You're scared the entire time. You don't know what they're gonna say. But I can't imagine if the doctor come in, said there's a problem with the baby, or a problem with Allie, but there's nothing I can do because Ted Cruz thinks he knows better. That's not who we are as Texans. When I'm in the United States Senate, we'll restore a woman's right to choose. We'll make Roe v. Wade the law of the land again. And we'll make these stories of seeing these horrific experiences going on all over our state something of the past. That's my commitment to Texans. This is a pattern. He talks tough, but he never shows up. We have a phrase for this in Texas, all hat and no cattle. That's what Senator Cruz is. Six more years of this? Come on. He's had 12 years to do it already. Give someone who actually will a chance. Senator Cruz, thank you for joining. I'm Colin Allred. I'm a fourth generation Texan. I'm a husband and a father. I was raised here in Dallas by a single mom who's a public school teacher. And I've been shaped by every part of this state. My grandfather was a customs officer in Brownsville. That's where my mom and Nat were born and raised where I spent a lot of my childhood. I was captain of the Baylor football team in Waco, trained for the NFL draft in Houston, and I've served my hometown in, D in Dallas in Congress for the last six years. In that time, I've been the most bipartisan Texan in Congress. I'm the exact opposite of Senator Cruz, who's the most extreme senator in the United States Senate, maybe the most extreme in the last 30 years. But that's not enough. He's also only focused on himself. That's how you can go to Cancun when millions of Texans need you and hundreds are dying. The truth is, we don't have to be embarrassed by our senator. We can get a new one. That's what this election is all about. That's what I'm asking Texans to give me a chance to do.